Okay, this is uh, Greg McIntyre. I'm the Elder Law Guy, and we're doing a um, broadcast here on, it's part of our foundation series. Foundations I consider to be general durable power of attorney, health care power of attorney, living will, and uh, your will. So those are the four foundations, and this one is um, on wills. Are they obsolete? Um, and the perils or pitfalls of passing things by will. Um, used to, you know, I guess mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, they, they always said, you know, we need to pass everything by will. We need to get our will done. We need to get updated. Every time that I see someone um, at a seminar or anything else, you know, oh, you know, do you guys do wills? Um, what is Elder Law? Oh, you do wills. Um, sure, we write wills. Absolutely. But is that really what you need? Um, sometimes not necessarily. In fact, I like to say if I do my job right, the last thing we're going to do is pass property by a will. Why is that? Well, a will is still a functional document to pass property for, for a lot of people. And it's important to have. I like to say that that's the safety net. That's what can catch anything that we don't pass directly uh, and make a transferable upon death asset. I, you know, if you're doing the planning so that, let's talk about the perils of the probate estate first. The perils of opening up a probate estate are that liens can attach. Uh, generally, I know in North Carolina where, where I'm an attorney um, and where, where I practice law, um, liens can attach there. Um, by the way, if you've got any questions on Periscope, just put them up the screen there and I will answer your questions to the best of my ability and we can go back and forth on it, okay? Obviously, nothing I say here creates an attorney-client relationship. So, liens could attach to um, property that you pass by will. And that's the reason that in North Carolina you have a 90-day uh, publication requirement or waiting period, depending on the size of the estate, for liens or bills to be filed in the estate, in the open estate. If bills or liens come in on the estate, then the probate assets are either used if it's cash or sold if it's, say, it's a house or something of value to satisfy those liens before the property is passed down to your heirs. So when you think, you know, the house that you pass by will is going to be passed down to your kids, maybe not. Because if you have a medical lien that's hanging out there or some other kind of lien, within that 90-day period, they can come in, you know, say, look, they owe us this much money, and the courts are going to require that that lien's paid before the heirs get the money. So, if, you know, if there's a house and that's all there is, that house has got to be sold to satisfy that lien. Well, there's ways to pass the house and other property, uh, you know, just like a beneficiary on a life insurance policy outside of the estate directly to um, the, uh, directly to your heir or whoever you want to receive that, that property. You can do that with real estate, could do that with your house, could do that with land, um, could do that with, really, you could set up a car or, or any other. You could do that using deeds. We could do that using trust. Um, but there's other ways to pass property besides a will. Um, so that's one reason uh, that people may want to avoid wills or the pitfalls of using a will is that Liens can attach, okay? So it can trip up the estate. Also, um, wills are public documents. So if you've got uh, an estate and you don't want uh, people seeing what's in it or uh, to know, you know how you pass things along, uh, don't record it or don't file it down at the courthouse because anybody, you know, it's public record. You can go take a look at it. Uh, and see just how property was passed. Um, other ways to pass property aside from going down to the courthouse and filing a will would be to use a trust. Trust are private documents, and you can have an attorney, for instance, administer that trust uh, right you know, with the family present 
right in the office, right around the conference table. So, so uh, um, wills are public, trust are private documents. Another pitfall of using a will. Now, all that being said, wills are still, as I said, the foundations, okay, is part of the foundations that you still need in place. It's still a reliable document to make sure that whatever we plan to pass directly transferable upon death still passes and gets where you want it to go. But I think if you're doing proper planning, you're going to look at how to pass assets directly to loved ones so that liens can't attach, so that nothing can get in the way. You may say, well, I'm not going to have anything owed at the end. And, and it's my job to look at the contingencies and to plan for protection of your assets. And that's what I do. So if, I, if you're with me, I'm going to tell you about potential harm that may come by you not passing things directly or protecting the assets properly. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have a car wreck on the way home today. In North Carolina, for instance, it's a very low threshold. Uh, or insurance threshold. You don't have to have much. In North Carolina, the minimum limits policy on insurance for car insurance is 3060. That means if one person is hurt in a wreck, the most they'll pay out is $30,000 if you carry minimum limits for liability. Multiple people, uh, you know, a mom with five kids in the car, um, $60,000 is the top limit that policy would pay out. So you could see how. Um, if that's what you're carrying as, as insurance, for instance, and uh, toward the, you know, as you get older, you have a wreck or something like that and injure someone, heaven forbid that happens. But we have, I know there's car wrecks every day. I see them. Um, and we know there's car wrecks every day and that people are injured. So it's a common occurrence. Um, if that happened and your insurance weren't enough and $30,000 is not a lot to cover an individual injury that's that's a severe injury, or 60000 for that mom and five kids in the van if there are serious injuries. Uh, so if you don't have that, you know, enough insurance to cover it, then that can roll over and be a lien on your probate estate if there's a judgment entered against you. Uh, after you pass, you have to come back and pay that, or things have to be sold to pay it. So all these are protective type measures. And you should look and see just the potentials. You know, you don't know the sharks in the water, as they say, until it bites you. And then, you know, you wish you had known or you wish you had planned for that. Um, you wish you had worn your shark repellent, I guess. So, so uh, uh, just Greg McIntyre, the Elder Law Guy. This is a live Periscope Q&A. We're going to give one of these every Friday at 1 o'clock. That's our goal. Every Friday at 1 o'clock. So tune in. Every Friday at 1 o'clock, we'll give one on a different topic. I'm doing a foundational series right now. Next week, most likely, we'll pick another foundations issue, such as healthcare power of attorney, general durable power of attorney, living will. If you have topics you want me to address, please shoot them to me, and we can discuss them, and we can go back and forth on them. So, again, Greg McIntyre, McIntyre Elder Law, helping seniors protect their assets and legacies. Have a great weekend, Memorial Day. I'm wearing my pen former veteran, so our, our, I'm a veteran, and uh, a lot of love for the, for the veterans out there. I really want to honor the men and women who served and, and passed.